guys and gals, and over here from Drake Wing Gaming, so if you mount Twitter, the Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Repeat, Sissel's Path. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. I forget how scary Teach can be sometimes. Really? I always have a hard time forgetting. <laughs> we both let out a sigh of relief as we stepped into the air-conditioned lobby. There was significantly more breathing room, breathing room in here, and the paparazzi seemed too distracted to bother us. Thank fuck, I thought we'd never get out of that mess. The tournament's gonna start in a little bit. I gotta head over to the briefing area with all the other contestants. You gonna be okay, Adrian? I should be asking you the same thing. A fond smile flickered across his face. Sissel lifted the hand that he was still holding and planted a firm kiss on my knuckles. My face felt a little warm. For the last time, I'm doing fantastic. What a lose, I'm in a much better place than I was when, I, when you comforted my hyperventilating ass at the regional tournament. So, try not to worry too much, you twat. Heh, <laughs> sorry. It's a tough habit to shake. Feels kind of weird to be the one being worried about being worried after this time around. But I get used to it, because I'm going to start fussing over you like a doting housewife. I let out an amused snort. Ha! <laughs> when did you become the housewife in this equation? I mean, out of the two of us, I'm the one who's a semi-competent cook. And I look better in an apron. And I'm better at cleaning. The city of your room when I moved in was, um, not great. Hey, it wasn't that bad. Sure, hon. Whatever you say. Hey, no, wait. I'm not moving past this. I was at least a little neat. Sissel laughed. There was a warm twinkle in his eye as he watched me stumble over my own words. He was just poking at me to distract from my worries. My face flushed and my chest felt a little bubbly. To have someone looking out for me like this, it was... It was nice. I blinked and noticed someone glowering at Sissel's back. Hmm, not to ruin the mood, but that foppish guy is glaring lasers into your skull right now. Sissel sighed and rubbed his temples tiredly. Again? Good God, that guy's persistent. Why can't any of you just shut up and bake like a normal person? The foppish contestant crossed his arms and raised his chin with heavy disdain. Some of us walked a long road to get here, kid. To watch a nobody like you just waltz in and steal the spotlight, it's insulting. You may have made a splash with the little kidnapping scheme and being the family of previous winners, but what are you, Sissel Bradley? You have nothing to your name. Despite the incessant heckling, Sissel's lips twitched into a proud smile at the name Bradley. Dude, get over yourself. It's one measly tournament. It's not the end of the world. You're still going to be the same person whether you win or lose. Should you be spending more time with folks who care about you instead of yapping at me the whole time? The foppish contestant's lips tightened. Your arrogance will be your undoing. I will crush you on the tournament floor. With that, the other boy stormed off. Yeesh, that was a lot. Hey, Adrian? Hmm? Thanks for staying with me. Through everything. That bubbly feeling in my chest grew even warmer. I smiled and pecked him on the cheek. If you keep spouting romantic and sappy shit like this, you're gonna lose all your punk cred. Hmm. Take it now. Hmm. Huh. I hope you know it's very punk to spoil your boyfriend. He glanced up at a clock hanging in the wall of the lobby with a frown. I should get going for real now. The tournament's about to start. Cecil faced me with a determined smile. I'll be okay, and you'll be too. I promise. Heh, <laughs> I'll hold you to that. Cecil nuzzled my face affectionately and turned towards the hallway where the other contestants were gathering with a determined smile. Wish me luck. Ow! Before he could leave, something sailed across the lobby and bopped him square across the forehead. As Cecil scrambled to pick himself off the floor, another identified object flew towards his face. He yelped and managed to catch it before I added another bruise to his face. Cecil, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I wasn't expecting a fucking assassination attempt. The fuck? He glanced at the projectile in his hands and snorted. It was a large sweet potato the words, You can do it and go get him, says written on it in bright pink sharpie. <laughs> Herschel shuffled his way across the lobby towards us, another potato in his hands with a wide grin on his face. How you feeling, kid? Concussed? You know, if you had some heartfelt words of encouragement to share, you could have just told me. You know, like a normal person? Nah, I figured the sweet potato... Mm. No, I figured this... Ah, God, Southern, Southern. Sorry, it's been a long day. I figured the sweet potatoes would be, leave a better impression. I'm just like the new this new bruise. It'll make you look all tough and punk for the camera. Twat? Cecil grumbled and rubbed his head as he stuffed the potato into his large chef pockets. He snatched the second potato from Herschel's grip before he could try anything and popped it in his pocket as well. Despite his irritated expression, Sissel's lips twitched with a hint of a smile. So, where have you been for the past hour? Those reporters would have loved an interview with an old champion of this tournament. Herschel shuddered. 
Ugh, oh, don't remind me. I've been dodging those piranhas since I got here. Just ignore them. They're always milking folks for drama at every competition. I survived one tournament's worth of media meddling. A second is just too much. Now it's your turn on the pedestal. Ain't it great? Hey, hands off! The older rabbit grinned as he slung his arm around Sissel's shoulder and gave him a playful noogie on the head. Don't you worry about a thing. Just be your usual adorable self, showing off those new bruises and kick some ass. I'll be cheering you on all the way, sis. All right, all right, let go. I think I've had my fill of encouraging talks. Gotta get going for real now. Sissel huffed, his face flushed as he straightened his chef's hat. He gave me one last peck on the cheek before stomping down the hall with the other contestants. Herschel sighed and wiped a proud tear from his eyes. Look at him go, all grown up. Feels like it was yesterday that Sis was, that Sis was still just a little kid kicking at my ankles. Careful, Hirsch. If you start reminiscing too hard, we're going to need to start treating you like the old man you are. Oh, I'm allowed to baby Sis as much as I want. Teasing the little guy is one of the greatest joys in life. One of these, one of these days he's going to clap back and your elderly bones won't be able to take it. I'd like to see him try. That'll take a whole lot for Sis to get under my skin. Suddenly, Sissel shouted down the hall in a loud voice that was definitely heard by most of the lobby. Hey, boss, I can't help but notice that you're walking kind of funny. Did your date last night really go that well? What? Uh, don't, don't yap about that here. Herschel McDermott? A bottom? But, sir, in your interviews from years past, you assured everyone that you'd score a date with a hot chick with your luring accent. What caused this drastic change? Also, how big was it? I'm not gonna talk about this shit on live TV. The media piranhas immediately swarmed Herschel and swept him away in a storm of flashing cameras, leaving not but bones and indignant sputtering. Spluttering. Poor Herschel, he'll never read the same again. Sizzle flashed me a grin and a thumbs up before disappearing down the hall. I was waiting in line along with everyone in the crowd, slowly filing into the stadium anxiously fidgeting at the hem of my jacket. <clears throat> Left alone with my thoughts, my mind began swimming to familiar places, as it always did. I sucked in a deep breath and squeezed my eyes shut. Everything was looking good. Everything was going smoothly. So why can I shake this gnawing dread in the back of my head? Yo, Adrian, you're spacing out. You doing okay? I blinked. Ginny was standing in front of me, staring at me with a worried frown. When did you get here? Didn't you have a posse of news reporters to wrangle? Ginny smirked and flipped her hair dramatically. They're easy to handle if you have the right touch. What happened to your sunglasses and scarf? They're currently up for auction for $500 each. Damn, lowballing much? I was feeling generous, just wanted to have some fun with my five minutes of fame. Her playful smirk fell as she poked me in the ribs. All that aside, are you doing okay? You've been a little off lately. I'm fine, just a little nauseous from all the flashing lights, that's all. And I guess I'm just not used to it yet. Hmm? Used to what? I waved a hand, vaguely gesturing at everything. This, things going well, I, I don't know. It's just, after scrambling to fix things for so long, I guess I'm just constantly waiting for things to fall apart again. Ginny chuckled softly. I know the feeling. It's been a long road. But we got here, didn't we? Might as well bask in the joy while it's here instead of dreading when it leaves. I sighed. You're right, but it's easier said than done. I just keep thinking about the time Sissel left on the train and... And Herschel in the hospital. And, and you... My chest suddenly lurched and I fell over onto my knees, the world suddenly turning ice cold. Pain split through my skull as I struggled to draw a breath at the freezing air burning my lungs. I couldn't breathe. Something was squeezing around my neck tightly like a rough constricting rope. I clawed at my neck but found nothing. I couldn't breathe. I... I... Warm hands suddenly seized my shoulders. Ginny was kneeling in front of me, cradling my hyperventilating head in her hands as she whispered quiet words of comfort into my ears. It's okay. You're here. It's so safe. The danger's over. All those times are gone. You fought hard and you've won. This is your happy ending. Breathe. I nodded numbly, my throat rasping with every breath. Ugh, it's like now. Water time. Alright guys and gals, and we are back. Let's jump back into it, shall we? Okay. Slowly, the icy, the icy gnawing in the back of my skull lessened and warmth seeped back into my body. I'm okay. I'm here. I sucked in a deep breath and lifted my head, blinking through the heavy haze. S sorry, I don't know what came over me. Has this been happening a lot? Kinda? Never this badly, though. I just figured it was from the stress from everything that's been happening. Ginny's brow furrowed with worry, but I waved her off dismissively. Don't worry about it. 
They're probably past what's this whole competition fiasco is over. And then we'll have a whole happy ending to enjoy, yeah? Ginny let out a quiet breath. Oh, this is him talking. Okay. Yeah, a happy ending. You better go and find a seat in the stadium now. You'll miss the opening ceremony. What about you? I'll catch up. No worries. Just grabbing a sip of water first. No coffee or boba tea? Shocking. Ginny flipped me the bird as I laughed and hopped down the hopped down the hall toward the seating area. Hmm. Ginny's smile fell as I disappeared down the hall and out of earshot. She stood alone in the lobby in silence for several moments. Her shoulders slumped with defeat. Then she turned and spoke into the empty room. Haley, you there? There was a moment of hesitation before the ashen wish materialized beside her with her head hung low. That night, when Echo gifted me that little bit more time... Where did that time come from? He couldn't just make it out of nothing. Ginny let out a sigh and chuckled quietly to herself. It always ends the same way, doesn't it? She turned and made her way towards the stadium seating area. Come on. Let's enjoy this happy ending while we can, shall we? Hmm. The stadium was so massive I could barely wrap my head around where to sit. Contestants were standing on the large stage at the front of the arena with studio lights searing their faces while thousands of eyes watched them closely. To his credit, Sissel looked relatively unfazed at his, at his table as he, quietly as he quietly checked his ingredients drawer. He shot quick, suspicious glances at the other contestants, but seemed fairly confident. Owen, Philip, Jenny, Herschel, and I shoved our way to the front, to the dismay of many, but one glare from Jenny and Philip cowed them into silence. I stood on my tiptoes and waved eagerly over the towering heads around us. Sissel caught sight of me and grinned bashfully as we all hooted and hollered over the noise of the crowd. He seems to be taking things in stride. Seems like we've got nothing to worry about. You think so? What if the other contestants pull some sabotage shit again? Unlikely. I snuck in here earlier to check in all the ingredients and supplies. Everything seems to be in order as far as I can tell. Hmm. Oh, that's good. So that's where you've been this whole time. Why didn't you come find us afterwards? Owen could have used some adult supervision. I think he almost seduced and debauched one of the reporters. Owen raised a brow, utterly offended. Hey, what do you mean almost? I think I gave that reporter a pretty good private interview. I mean, the bathroom stalls here are kind of crammed, so I had to make do. Oh, you did not! Shh, I think it's starting soon. Soon the lights dimmed and the judges lined up at the front of the stage as the host introduced everyone. One of the older judges seemed to command respect over all the others. His salt and pepper hair shimmered in the harsh studio light and his short mustache bristled as he scanned over the contestants. The older judge's eyes narrowed as he set his eyes on Sissel. He leaned over to the other judges and whispered something in a serious fervor. The other judges blinked in surprise and followed his gaze, sizing up Sissel with looks of intrigue. I elbowed Herschel cautiously, curiously. Who's that old guy? He looks kind of important. Herschel followed my gaze and he jumped in surprise. That's... <clears throat> that's Bar... <clears throat> that's, that's Bartholomew Focacia. Well, shit, he's still judging the competition. Feels like he's been doing this for a century now. So he's just a super old judge? The oldest judge. Damn, I'm surprised the fossil's still kicking. From the stage, Judge Bartholomew turned his head and suddenly his gaze shooting directly across the stadium in Herschel's direction. The rabbit immediately snapped his jaw shut, shuddering in fear. I squinted. There's no way he could hear us from that far away. Alright, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all if I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silver, and thank you going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thanks to our three gold tier patrons, Zeke, Toby, and Blue Wolf Alpha. Y'all are awesome. We love you. Thank you for something to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all Ron Safe for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I shall see y'all in the next video. Bye bye